What's happening YouTube? Owen here from Dark Entertainment, the place to hear tales from Wales and afar. If you're into creepy stories donated to us by people like yourselves, then feel free to like and subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Now, let's get into the video. Welcome back to the channel. Now this episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, for the purposes of this episode, I'm not going to be putting my dark and sinister voice on like I normally do. I sound dark and sinister enough as it is. Um, but I'm going to be narrating this um, in a sort of free flow way. Because as previously stated in the last video, um, this was an experience that I actually had and I don't need to put any emphasis on it I just need to tell you exactly what happened um, and it is it is definitely the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me since I'm free narrating this uh, you may hear the odd creak in the background from my chair um, it is a new chair, but with my fat ass on it, it does tend to creak. And I do apologise, I'll try to keep my movement and shuffling down to a minimum. Where to begin? Uh, years ago, I was working as an engineer. Um, I was a fire and security engineer after university, and my job was to go around and uh, service fire alarms and security alarms and emergency lights in properties. Uh, what would happen is on a Monday morning, I would arrive to the office. Uh, they would give you, yeah, well, give us engineers all the documentation uh, for the week. Um, and then we would travel to these various properties and uh, try to gain access and service the, service the alarms and maintain them. Um, now, with the documentation and with the types of properties that we dealt with, uh, we would normally have a box for additional information on the top. Um, in this box would be uh, essential information for certain jobs, such as um, in order to gain access to this property, you need to speak to the tenant in flat XYZ, or you need to contact uh, this number or use this code for access various little bits of information that people have found over the years and have been updated all the way through well one of the properties that I had was a church hall and in this little box there was the information saying you need to ring this number when you gain when you arrive at the property in order to gain access now, I arrived there and to explain the, the scene, um, the church was on one side of the road and the church hall was on the opposite side of the road. Now another little piece of information that I need to put in is that, as you can probably tell from my accent and, and the name of the channel, uh, I am from Wales. Uh, Wales is a mountainous region. We've got a lot of hills and valleys and things like this. And in this particular place, the, uh, the, the church hall was effectively on a hill. Um, and if you imagine a standard church hall, which I'm going to show you on the screen now, um, that stretched out over the hill um, almost like it would be on stilts, but there was a smaller basement level lower down the hill, if that makes sense. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm going to put a few gammy diagrams in from my fantastic paint skills uh, just to demonstrate exactly uh, the type of building and what I was seeing. Anyway, back to the story. I'd arrived at site and in that little box was this mobile phone number that I had to contact. 
So I rang them off my works phone and I uh, spoke to the priest who sounded a little bit sort of um, surprised that I was ringing, saying, uh, and he explained that he'd forgotten that I was turning up today um, and that he was currently in a prayer session. Um, but if I could give him 15, 20 minutes, he would arrive and let me have access to the property. So I waited in the van, you know, the usual thing, mess around on my phone, listen to a bit of music, sang like a canary to my favourite song, whatever it is anyway. I uh, was waiting there for about 20 minutes when there was a knock on the window and this little man was there, must have been in his 50s, uh, slightly balding hair, um, glasses, and, um, you know, jumper on. Looked completely normal. Looked, yeah, I hate to say it, but um, almost a stereotypical priest, to tell you the truth. Lovely bloke, but anyway, he... Um, I, I got out, I greeted him, I got all my kit out of the back of the van, and... Um, he opened the main door to the church hall and as I was just about to step in he sort of stopped me and said oh, have you got the um, paperwork there? and I said yeah and handed it over um, he sort of looked through it a second and then um, asked if I had a pen he signed the bottom of it and um, he said look I, I hope you don't mind I am going to have to shoot off well, as I said on the phone um, I, I'm in the middle of a prayer session and I, I, I you know, I, I've got to get back to it. I've, I've forgotten that you were turning up. And I didn't think anything of it. That was the end of that. Um, anyway, um, he, he also turned around and said, look, um, when you leave, just make sure that you slam the door after you because sometimes it, it doesn't quite catch. The wind takes it and anyone can get access. Um, but as you'll see, you've got the main church hall in front of you here, and then just to the right of the stairs, there's the green room, and there's the cell, um, the stairs down into the uh, the basement area. Uh, there's a few other rooms in there. You might not be able to get access to them, but just do what you can. Um, and then he left. So I went in and I dismantled the fire panel, started testing the batteries, testing the sounders and various things like this. And then um, set up my, uh, my smoke poles to go testing the testing fire alarm. So I went through and I, I tested the main hall, went on stage, tested the detectors there, tested everything in the green room. And then this is where things started to get a little bit strange. Um, I would naturally call myself a skeptic when it comes to the paranormal and things like this. And certainly at this point in time, I would have said that, yeah, I mean, I, I would generally think that there was a rational explanation for a lot of things. So I, went into the green room and there were a set of stairs that were leading back on themselves down into this, this basement area. And I began walking down them and they were the type of type of stairs that you'd find in any sort of 80s horror film. They were made of wood, they creaked, they were ominous. Um, and you can imagine them falling away from you if you tried to run out of there in, emer in an emergency. Anyway, I I went down them. You know, it's just a, some old stairs. They're bound to be creepy, you know. And anyway, um, and as I got to the bottom of the stairs, I went cold. My whole body started to shiver, and the hairs on my arms started to stand up. And I, it, it was even. Um, condensation in my breath but I put that down to well, it's an old church hall there's no um, 
there's no heating on, there's no windows down here, it's pitch black, the, the lights weren't working, there was no heat whatsoever, so it's bound to be cold. Um, and it's lower down the, this hill. Um, since there were no lights, I had a works phone at the time, which was a little Nokia thing, and this particular sort of brick Nokia had a torch on the end of it. So since my hands were full, I took this out, held it in my mouth like a chalk ice, and started wandering around the room, illuminating things as I went with this, this phone in my mouth. And there were a few large rooms there that had things like drum kits in them for kids' band practice and um, soft toys for, um, you know, like mother's meetings and children's play areas and things like this. Um, but it looked pretty derelict. Um, one of the um, fire um, emergency exits um, had spray painted on it, something like... <laughs> Something that you'd find in a, a horror film or a zombie film saying, uh, do not enter dead inside, but this just said, do not enter. But it, it still looked quite creepy. And it, even at the time I was thinking, this would be a perfect place for, to film something like that. Anyway, I went through and I carried on testing each, each thing. And I got all the way to the end. Um, and as you'll probably see on screen at the moment, um, the main downstairs area had two fire exits on either side of it, um, uh, on, this, on this main corridor. Um, and on the fire exits were uh, emergency brake glass, manual core points, in numbers. and in order to test these without that actually having to break the glass, you have a set of keys. Um, and because they were all different makes of these, you. You can't just use one key for everything. You've got to have half a dozen keys that stab you in the leg when you walk in. They, they're awful things. But anyway, I got to the last call point and I took the keys out of my pocket and was bending down, looking at the, the, um, the key hole to find out which particular key it was. Um, when I suddenly stopped in my tracks because I could hear the creaking stairs down to the basement start to creak um, as if someone was walking down them. Now, me being rational, I thought, right, okay, perhaps it's the priest. Um, he's finished his prayer session now and he's come back to um, shut the door after me, whatever it may be. Uh, so I put all my uh, smoke poles and equipment down and and I wandered back towards the stairs. Um, and as I turned around the corner to the stairs and looked up, I froze because the footsteps had stopped. Um, and there was no one on the stairs. And I once again try to rationalise this and I said, well, perhaps you've imagined this. Um, this is very strange, but you've imagined it. So I wandered back down the corridor and to tell you the truth, I was on edge now. I was starting to... I could, I could feel my, my heart racing and I was starting to panic. Um, and by this point, I just wanted to go. I'd had enough. So I fumbled with the keys again, found the right key, and tested the, the brake glass point. And then I heard what sounded like running footsteps up behind me. And I span around, only to see an empty corridor. There was nothing there. And then at that point, I felt breath. <sighs> as if someone had just breathed right behind me. And by this point, I ran. Um, I, I couldn't be in there anymore. I wanted out, I wanted to, 
just get out of there. So I, I ran and ran and ran right up the stairs, out to the front door, and I slammed it behind me. I put the panel back together and got in the van and drove. And I drove for about two miles um, before finding a lay-by where I just uh, pulled in and began to, um, well, tried to calm myself down. My hands were shaking, my heart was racing. Uh, I looked like I'd uh, run a marathon at this point because I was sweating profusely, which, as you can imagine, is probably not a good look for a fat guy like me. Um, and I couldn't, couldn't process this. Uh, I couldn't understand what had just happened. Um, and after a while, I, I thought I need to speak to someone about this. So I rang one of the other engineers, um, a guy called Gary. And Gary um, wasn't the type of uh, person to get scared over these things. I mean, he, uh, he used to work as a bouncer and various things like this. Um, and he could hear as soon as he picked up the phone that something was wrong. Something didn't sound right. And I said, oh, I've just been in a job. And he said, are you up in Aberdeer? And I froze and I said, yes. He said, at the church hall? I said, yes. He then proceeded to tell me that I'm not the only person that has actually experienced something there. He, he told me that every engineer that has been there has experienced some sort of strange phenomenon. Um, and they tend to give the, the job to the new engineers because the old engineers don't want to go there. Um, he then proceeded to tell me about when they took over the panel. And what they mean by took over the panel was that um, the panel, the, the, the fire alarm was maintained by a different company. Uh, the owner of the property that then um, changed hands, uh, changed, changed um, maintenance company. We took it over. And when you take over a new panel, it's not just a case of um, carrying on with maintenance. You've got to check to make sure that it's been wired correctly in the first place, make sure that uh, the load on the batteries in the panel isn't too much, and various other checks. Make sure there's no breaks in the cable. Um, before anyone else can um, turn up and uh, start maintenance on it. So he arrived with another engineer called Dean. Now, once again, Dean was a big burly bloke. He used to do bodybuilding. Not the t these aren't the type of guys that would get scared over something, you know, ghosts or aliens or stuff. They, they, they just wouldn't believe in that sort of stuff. But whilst, with it, whilst they were in the entrance area, they were um, checking the battery, dropping batteries on the panel and checking the loads and things like this. Um, and Gary was in the middle of setting up the smoke poles when he looked down the main corridor and in the doorway of the green room was a black shadow, the same size as a man. He immediately started to sort of whisper to Dean, 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 look, um, there's something here. Dean ignored him. He said, look, I'm, I'm doing the panel. Just give me a, give me a second. And Gary could not take his eyes away from this thing. And then he started tapping Dean on his shoulder, saying, Dean, Dean, you need to look at this. And Dean still ignored him, and eventually Gary turned around, tapped Dean, grabbed him, and they both looked down the corridor uh, to see that this shadow was halfway up the hall. Um, and they ran. They, they got out of there. They just they, they ran 
uh, got in the van and then basically had a, a garbled discussion. They, they, they said, look, we've got to go back. We've got to test this thing. We've got to, you know, make sure it all works. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to be in there any longer than we have to. And they went round in a pair uh, when they went back to make sure that this thing was done. They didn't have any experience after that. Um, but he also told me that that's the reason why the priest signed the paperwork to say that the job was done without actually stepping foot in the property. Now, as I said, I would consider myself a skeptic, but I can't explain that one. And I can't explain it for several reasons. Number one is, how is it that so many people have had a different experience in this particular place? And experiences that are, are, are different from each other, from running up behind people or a black mass materializing and various other things. I don't know what it could be. I don't know whether it's a ghost or if you believe in that sort of thing, it's some sort of demonic entity. Um, all I can say is that it scared me enough that my ass could mill wheat. Um, and I never wanted to go back. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I now have an interest in the paranormal. And I run this channel so that I can find the experiences that other people have had in a workplace environment. As I said, it's a bit of a strange episode, this one, but it gives you a, a bit of an explanation as to why I do what I do in this channel. But anyway, I hope you liked the episode. It is um, an unusual one. Um, I do apologize that I haven't been able to post as many videos as I initially started out. Uh, that's because I've started a new job and there's an intensive training period. Um, I know that one, one person commented uh, on my last video and I did promise that I would try to get as many videos out as I could, and I haven't been able to so far. Um, anyway, back to the usual spiel. Uh, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, we'd appreciate a like um, and a subscribe. It all helps towards the algorithms. And uh, I'd like to hear your comments in the uh, comment section on YouTube. Let me know if you've had any experiences like this or what you think this is. But anyway, that's all from us here at Dark Entertainment. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Ta-ta!